What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on Pig City Hockey and today is going to be a little bit of a different type of video. In the past, I've done tons of player versus player matchup and preview and comparison videos. Uh, and today we're going to be doing a video like that, but not in the sense of using stats and all the other analytic analytics that we can use to compare players. It's going to be basically just my opinion on the kind of predicament that the Jets have found themselves in in the last week, I would say, with the emergence of Dylan Sandberg in his first ever NHL game, as well as the emergence of Declan Chisholm coming in and not just being a replaceable defenseman getting some exposure because of a COVID list, but actually playing meaningful minutes and being a meaningful defender and a really impactful player in a very limited uh inexperienced role and not to mention the fact that the winnipeg jets also find themselves with villa hinola who's currently not playing because i believe he has covid and was in that covid box and has kind of just been in that weird taxi bubble because of that for a while now the Jets kind of find themselves at a crossroads because i have one you guys know for how much i am a big offender i am of villa hinola i want to see the kid play villa hinola is the future of this jets the uh, blue line without a doubt but so is Dylan Sandberg, and so was Declan Chisholm. So what do you do if you're Adam Lowry? What do you do if you're Kevin Sheveldayoff? You just went out and acquired Brendan Dillon and Nate Schmidt. They've been playing pretty good. Brendan Dillon has been, you know, okay at times. But Nate Schmidt has been a great get. The defense has been the only stable part of this disaster season so far by the 35 game mark. By t uh, today, you got the day you guys are watching this game. The Washington Capitals will be playing tonight. Uh, lineup hasn't come out yet. I don't know what to expect. But this is going to be kind of my thoughts on what I would do if I was the Winnipeg Jets right now and how. I would handle these three young defensemen plus Logan Stanley on the other side of that coin as well um, and how I would disperse the minutes and figure out who gets what opportunity right now so regardless of the team that you root for definitely consider dropping a subscription and let's jump into this video so right off the back I think that Billy Hinola should be playing over these other defenders uh, even Logan Stanley I, I, I think that that's just a, a given at this point based on how good he's been he killed it as an NHL rookie he should have played the whole season that year when he was dominant but nope the, you know, the Jets being the penny pinchers they are have to conserve his contract like that makes any sense we talked about that in the prey pucks last episode with Ryan from Hawk Garbage Sports I don't get that one enough said on that but then you have Declan Chisholm, Dylan Sandberg, and technically Logan Stanley as well, who's a sophomore player at this point, but is still a young defenseman in that kind of bubble prospect group that we have back there. And when it really comes down to it, I think that Dylan Sandberg and Villa Hinola should be on this team. I think that when you look at how they what they bring, how they've played, and everything else, I think those are the guys that I would rather see on this team right now. Declan Chisholm could play the entire season on the Winnipeg Jets and be fantastic, and I would love it. But the thing with Declan Chisholm right now is that he could be immaculate for the Manitoba Moose and grow his game even more down there, and I would still be just as happy. Declan Chisholm does not need to be in the NHL right now. I know I'm always one of those guys that likes to push the youth into the NHL. Some of you think that I rush prospects. Some of you think that, you know, I blah, blah, blah. Whatever your thoughts are on how I view uh, player development in the NHL, that's okay because it's my opinion and you've got your own. And you, if you're older than me, you've seen things differently. Perspective is a very beautiful thing. But what it really comes down to for this that I feel like is that if you give meaningful NHL opportunity to your two top defensive prospects in Villa Hinola and Dylan Sandberg and let Declan Chisholm, who I would say, well, almost almost everybody would consider, is probably your third best uh, defensive prospect. Obviously, Jonathan Kovacevic has kind of gained some traction in the last year and a half. Uh, he's very good, but even then, when the Jets needed to call up players, he didn't get the call up. So I don't know whether or not he has a home with the Winnipeg Jets in the big club in the future. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. I don't know. That's all kind of speculation from a fan but I'm not going to say anything else on that but I really think that Declan Chisholm should spend this season with the Manitoba Moose. I think you should send him down. I think you should let him be the number one option on that Moose team and then play Villa Hinola and Dylan Sandberg. If you're going to have COVID issues still or even have a taxi squad and be rotating guys out whatever you're going to be doing because of COVID those two guys should be seeing minutes. Obviously right now you can't see those guys both those guys getting minutes because Villa Hinola is out but when in a perfect world, I think that's what you should do. Because when it comes down to it, both of these players are very similar. Two-way defensemen, good in the neutral zone, heavy shots, can manage the puck well, can move the puck well. They can do anything that a defenseman in the modern-day NHL needs to do, and they excel at it. So that's why you don't need stats to compare these guys, because their games, although being different, are quite similar. The modern-day perfect two-way defenseman 
is always going to be very similar to other modern day perfect two-way defensemen because that's kind of just how that position has gelled. Everyone that's good in that area and is a good two-way defenseman, they kind of have similar play styles. They complement themselves, and that's very important. That's what you get when you have Vili Hinola and Dylan Sandberg coming into your lineup. They will complement each other. Just like how we saw Chisholm complement Sandberg, Vili will do the exact same thing. Obviously, I think the big question we all have to look at when talking about this kind of, you know, team that we're in right now, this spot we're in, having young guys come up, play good, given up, and when they're given the opportunity, what do you do with the guys that are on this team for a while? Because Josh Morrissey's here to stay. Neil Pionk just signed a four-year contract extension. Nate Schmidt has three years left on his contract, could possibly be even four. Brendan Dillon has, I believe, two years left on his contract, right? So you've got all these guys locked up with term. What do you do? Well, I think as the season has gone on, I think it's become very clear that although Brendan Dillon, in theory, made a lot of sense when we traded for him, but in reality, with all the young guys pushing on our blue line, I don't think he's going to be the guy that we need to keep, and I think he'll end up being the odd man out when you look at all the defensemen we have and possibly trading somebody. I think Brendan Dillon we all overpaid for at this point. I think two second round picks at the time seemed like a pretty good deal. I thought that maybe you could have maybe a second and a third or whatever, but when it comes down to it, a two seconds seems like an overpayment at this point. He hasn't been an amazing key part of this team. He's been replaceable at times. I think for the future of this team, after this season, you look at moving him, and if you're out of the playoffs, maybe look at moving him by the deadline. We're going to have a big discussion coming up in the next month, I would say, on the Jets going into the trade deadline because of the fact that Paul Stastny is expiring, Andrew Kopp is expiring, Brendan Dillon is not expiring but is a valuable asset to a team who's making pretty a pretty fair contract who has some term left. He is valuable. The Jets have kind of a plethora of riches because they were looking to compete and win for a cup this year. They signed guys to one-year deals, and if we're out of a spot to win, we could theoretically move those guys. Now, that's a conversation for a different day. But when we have young prospects like this, like a Chisholm, like a Sandberg, like a Villahinola, when they're trying to bud into the lineup, you need to find a way to be able to give those guys minutes. And I don't think right now, for the long run of this team, that a Brendan Dillon getting minutes over a Villahinola, Sandberg, or Chisholm is going to end up being the best thing for this club in their future at winning a Stanley Cup if they even have one with this core. I just don't know what the best bet for the Winnipeg Jets is moving forward because it's very hard because both all three of these young guys, and Chisholm is a kind of a surprise to this because I really did not see Chisholm pushing an NHL job or even kind of touching one for another year and a bit, but he's surprised me. He's been a fantastic with the Moose. Now you have this really kind of perfect scenario for the Jets. It's a, it's the perfect first world problem. You've got too many good defensemen that you don't know what to do with. We went from having no defense to having a little bit too many. I think in reality what you do, you got to play your top prospects. They've shown that they're NHL ready. They've shown that they have a lot to bring to this team and can help this team win. Let's not forget that even though it was the Detroit Red Wings, that was one of our best, most complete games of hockey I've seen probably in over a year. And that's going back to last season too. Last season we played in a weak Canadian division and we still were ass at the end of that season. This is going to be a very, very big hole for the Winnipeg Jets to climb out of. We're not historically a second uh, part of the season team. It's going to be a lot. But when it comes down to it, Vili Hinola versus Dylan Sandberg, it's a complete draw for me. Both of them bring so much value to a hockey team that they both should be given the opportunity. Declan Chisholm's the odd man out right now, and that's not because he's bad. It's because he's not at that point yet where these other players are. He can benefit more from the Moose. Sandberg also could benefit more from the Moose because he has had some injury problems in the last two seasons down there, hasn't played as many games as you would like, but I think after seeing him in his first game against Detroit, could deserve the Villy look, give him some 7-8 games, see how he fits at the NHL level, and then this time, don't send him down if he's good. So at the end of the day, Villy Hinola and Dylan Sandberg, I don't think it's a head-to-head -head matchup as much as people are saying. I think both of these guys should be in the lineup, and theoretically, if it was a perfect world, it's not. So there's a lot of other things that are going to have to be get done if these two want a regular job with the Jets for this season. A lot will have to be done. It's going to be an interesting rest of the season, especially if we continue to lose and we are out of the playoffs. There's going to be a lot of storylines to follow with this team. So if you're a fan of hockey, regardless of the team that you root for, and you want to know what the Winnipeg Jets are looking like going into the trade deadline, whether or not your team can trade for Andrew Kopp, Paul Stastny, or whatever other rumors might be circulating as the season goes on, definitely consider subscribing. Make sure you go down to the description below. Follow the Prairie Puck Podcast if you're looking for a new podcast series to watch in the 2022 new year. Uh, we have a brand new episode that came out giving the Winnipeg Jets their midterm report cards. So if you'd like to go check 
check that out. The link is down in the description below, as well as my Twitter, Instagram, my every other affiliated link. Go check that out. Subscribe, follow it. Uh, it helps me out. And if you always guys want to get in touch with me, I'm always active on those. So, you know, you've been, uh, you've been given the information to get in contact with me. If you ever want to see a certain video or something like that, when it pick Jets related, hit me up, message me, and I will try to do my best to bring that to you. So with all that being said, peace, love, and positivity. I hope you enjoyed this video. Go Jets, go, and bye-bye.